The Arizona Coyotes, one more game before the Christmas break. They are in Colorado taking on the Avalanche, and we will talk about it on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Locked On Coyotes, your number one daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes. I'm your host, Robin Leonio, alongside Matthew Jacobson. I want to thank everyone for making the show your first listen every day. We're free and available everywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube, Sirius XM, and ad-free on Amazon Music. we got a great show on today's episode. It is a special Saturday morning episode for you all. Um, as we, uh, we get ready for the final game before the Christmas break, Matt, the Arizona Coyotes versus Colorado Avalanche. Right now, they've only faced each other once, and that was during the Stanley Cup gauntlet, Matthew. Mm-hmm. Um, a decent amount has changed since then, but let's take a look at what happened last game, and then maybe discuss whether or not the Coyotes can replicate that. Yeah, special Saturday bonus episode. Are you guys tired of seeing us yet? Hearing us yet? Because I sure am. But no, so that, that game took place on November 30th, and the team is definitely healthier since then, uh, but it's a 4-3 to three finish, so Travis Boyd ties it in the second period, his second. Yeah, this was back when Travis Boyd was still playing. Uh, Schmalzi scores, Carconi scores, go to overtime. And the Nick Bukestead, uh, 4 minutes and 39 seconds into the overtime, it technically counts as an own goal. I remember being a little uh, upsetty spaghetti because I think Michelli had an assist on that and it ended his, his mullet point streak, but... They, they walk out of that one with a 4-3 to three victory that was on that five-game winning streak, the Stanley Cup gauntlet, really impressive stretch of hockey. And the Arizona Coyotes head into this one, winning their last four on the road. They are now 6-8-2, and two, and their last 10, they're 6-4-0. and oh. Looking at Colorado, Colorado's coming off their, their last game as a win. Their home record is 13-4-0. and oh. This is a tough team to beat in Colorado and the Coyotes. It was actually fun. So listening to the game last night, Michael Kesslering actually mentioned how uh, they wanted to improve that road record. Pretty much similar to how me and you said it on the show a couple of days ago, where it's like, Hey, this is a good opportunity to improve the road record. It was a good Mm -hmm. opportunity that took advantage of it. Can they keep it going in Colorado? A much tougher opponent in a really tough building. Yeah, no, that's that, that sure is the, you know, the difference, and especially when you're going up against a guy like Mason McKinnon, who I believe just had a really hot game. Mm-hmm. So, what was it? He had a what was it, a four goal game? I will go ahead and look it up right now as you continue your thought. Yeah, no, I mean it was it, it was absolutely insane. Um, <laughs> Wow, four goals and one assist, five points. Over five, his five last point five. game. <laughs> Over so his far. last five, Robin, you're not going to believe this. Uh, that is 14 points and six goals in his last five. We all know how good Nathan McKinnon is, and I kind of hate it because I, I very strongly dislike the Avs. Uh, but this kid is excellent. I probably shouldn't call him a kid anymore. He's, what, 28? He's older than me. This guy is ridiculous. <laughs> Nathan McKinnon is on my fantasy hockey team, and I like that he's doing that, doing well, you know, selfishly for my fantasy team. Mm-hmm. But oh god, like the fact that the Coyotes are catching him when he's like not like he's already good. We already knew this, but when he's this freaking hot, and you're just like, oh god, what is going to happen? What in God's name could possibly happen in this game? You know what? Let's have a little bit of positivity as I'm going to try to uh, distract from the fact that shirtless fat guy might have to make a comeback with how well his team's playing. Um, but side note, you have no idea how awkward I was in a locked on meeting earlier and like the person I was meeting with was looking at our channel and that is still like the top video and it just shows a very hairy fat individual. But anyway, uh, Colorado's on a five, five, five and zero record the last 10. And McKinnon's been absolutely on fire. What better time than to start cooling off than when the Coyotes come to town? And looking at the numbers, uh, let's see. 
power play percentages, Colorado is better than uh, Arizona by about 1.1%. They're ninth in the league. Arizona's 11th. Penalty kill, Colorado is 6th. Coyotes are 16th. Special teams is going to be a major battle here. Major, major battle because Colorado's better in every aspect. Goals four per game. Colorado is second in the league, 3.64. Coyotes, 3.13. Goals against Colorado is 13th, giving up a little over three goals a game. Coyotes are 11th at 2.84. So if if they can, I'm going to assume Connor Ingram gets a start tonight, but we ha- don't have any, or we don't have any uh, confirmation yet. But as long as the goaltending is sharp, the defense shows up and plays well. It's going to be a challenge, Robin. This is this is not a gimme. This is not even close. No, but they they can pull something off here, but they have to bring that a game. It's going to be a, a really difficult game in Colorado. Absolutely, and 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 it has it has to start with like making sure that you know you don't even like yeah sure it's the last game before the holiday break. You so you you end you 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 get to this break as strong as you can. We're mm-hmm. getting you're getting right around that halfway point in the season, especially too. So you just want to make sure you put out all the effort, especially knowing that one thing is said. A lot of people talk about this, Matthew, and saying that if you have if you're holding on to a wild card playoff spot by the Christmas break, there's a pretty good chance you're going to make the playoffs. Like playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs. <laughs> uh, we, we are still ancient enough to make that reference. <laughs> uh, oh God. But yes, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> um. Uh. But yeah, no. As I, as I said though, like yet yeah, the Coyotes need to realize that that they can end on they can end you know this you know up until this break on a high note. Beating Colorado, you know, fighting for some extra standings points, you know, keeping that that wild card spot um, going into the break is huge. They need to keep that motivation. They need to keep that message going. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, like you know, the 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 message sent against Ottawa and San Jose is probably a little bit of a different message than you're going to send to the when f- facing Colorado. Yeah, but I feel like the base, the core of the message is going to be the same. The mm-hmm. core is like, better fight your asses off. It's actually interesting. So if you're going against the Ottawa's and the San Jose's, some of the worst teams in the league, the the message is kind of like get the job done. And obviously, the like you said, the message wouldn't be that dissimilar in this game. But it's also like, hey, uh, this is a team that you probably shouldn't be. So let's surprise some people. Let's go out there and have like end yeah. on a really high note because the Coyotes have the opportunity to have a five game winning streak heading into the Christmas yeah. break. And, and again, get let's that win their time. Let's, with Nashville. And let's remember once more, as we mentioned earlier, the mm-hmm. last time these two played each other and you, and you mentioned it down November 30th during the Stanley cup gauntlet, that mm-hmm. was a four to three Coyotes win in OT in OT. Like the Coyotes rarely let a go game get to OT, and we talked about how that's been, you know a competitive game like that. The Coyotes and the Avalanche always keep a competitive game. You either a game like that where it's super competitive, or a game like let's flash back to the uh, the Stanley Cup bubble in which they just got curb stomped by the Avalanche. Uh, which version are we going to see? I am hoping it's the former. I want to ask a question. What goaltender do you think we're going to see? Against? Yeah. I think this time around, probably Gorgiev. I want to go after Prozy. But Gorgiev I mean, I, I mean that'd be nice. Game. That'd be a fun, that'd be a fun matchup to go against Prozy. Maybe, actually, or actually, I mean, maybe you give him the opportunity going going into the break. You give Pro that that the avalanche give Prozy going into the break and then have Gorgiev coming out of the break because they're going to get, it's it's essentially like a split, you know, back to back where you just have this one and then the break and then right after the break again. Fun fact, Robin, did you know Prozotov has a higher save percentage this year than Gorgiev? Interesting. 
It's like 907 versus 898. Yeah, it's but pretty similar number. Games, big games played. Uh, games played 26 for Gorgiev, 10 for Prozatov. That's respectable for a backup. Two eight four goal against. I I I want to see Prozy. I want to see Prozy. I just don't want to see like the the game Prozy ironically had in Colorado the other year where he played really well. Uh, where he got thrown to the wolves after you know the starting goaltender having to, uh getting like ten games, twelve games in a row, and you, forcing Prozy to get in there. I mean, you threw him to the wolves. I was pretty mad about that at the time, and he stepped up, so there you go. He absolutely did. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to keep talking about this game. Arizona Coyotes versus Colorado Avalanche. What will their three keys to victory be to take a one more win going into the Christmas break? We'll get to that right after a quick word from our sponsors on today's show. And today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities. Clayton Keller can score 50 goals. The Arizona Coyotes can make the Stanley Cup playoffs. And you can win big on Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is the number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, and especially the Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. You can play alongside your friends and goes beyond just hockey. You can play Daily Fantasy, NFL, NBA, MLB, and even college football all on Sleeper. You can talk in, group, in a group and team chat functionality, connecting with other fans. Entries can be made in other a minute. All you got to do is pick whether or not studs like uh, Nathan McKinnon or Clayton Keller or Michael Kesselring will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game to win a 100 times bet on Sleeper. You, can, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Coyotes fans. Predict the outcome of eight player stats, and you can win a hundred times your money playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use the promo code Locked On NHL, and you get up to a hundred dollars match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See Sleeper terms of use for details and locational availability. So let's continue, Matthew, talking about this Arizona Coyotes versus Colorado Avalanche set for uh, tonight when everyone's listening to this, December 23rd, right before the final day before the Christmas break, 24th, 25th, and 26th are off across the NHL. Um, so, and I think they're probably even one of the last ones of that day, too. So more people might be paying attention. Who knows? Uh, let's get to it, though, because it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be an interesting. It is going to be an interesting one. Three keys to the game. Three keys to the game. Uh, can I keep being generic and saying special teams, especially with the power plays being pretty similar in terms of a uh, of of conversion rate, but the penalty kills kind of being a little bit. Night I mean, and day? Uh, special teams is a great first key to have, and especially is if you listen to yesterday's episode and the everydayers are paying attention to what we're talking about on. Uh, you know, on on how special teams lines works and maybe some of our, you know, concerns and complaints that we've had in the past. Uh, in the game against San Jose, we noticed a little bit of a shakeup, you know, um, where I think the top line, you had Michelli up there. Um, and then the second power play unit, uh, Cooley went down. And uh, again, it wasn't a bad thing against Cooley. It's just like, hey, maybe it's a better fit. Um, they're finding things that works for this Arizona Coyotes team on the power play units. And I feel like, to me, when watching that against San Jose, for example, like, yeah, they only they 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 like they only got one opportunity. I would have liked to see two out of three versus just one out of three. But hey, that's just nitpicking. But it worked. Yeah, it did. It, it worked. They converted thirty three percent. Obviously, one out of three, respectable. Uh, I, I'd like to see him convert like two against Colorado, but that might be a, a bit of a tall task. But considering how mostly good this power play has been might be something they, they can actually uh they can actually step up to the occasion and and convert here but th i think special teams is going to be really important especially uh making sure that your special teams plays kind of above their head a little bit on the penalty kill side because again colorado excellent power play oh excellent power play and so but so that, so that kind of leads to 
a uh, a second key, Matthew, on that, and 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 I, get, and I guess the sense is I was going to take over on the second key at least, and it's mm-hmm. limit your penalties. They did a great job limiting penalties against San Jose. That was a very clean game. Yeah, um, very friendly match. Even though, like you know, San Jose seemed pretty frustrated in how things were going. Um, they, they easily could have, you know, tried to, uh, you know, try to poke the bear and try to and and try to get, you know, try to draw more penalties or whatever it was, or the other way around. But right? that could have get that could have been a worse worst game. What we're noticing is the Coyotes play better games when they limit the penalties. Is it a generic statement? Yes. Every team can play better without limiting their penalties, but it's especially the sense with the Coyotes because they went, when they went through that losing streak and when they went through like some of their worst losses, uh, what was it? They, they, they got like what they say, like 15 penalty minutes in the last 10 minutes of a game. Like you don't want that to happen. You don't want to get careless. Yeah, they they had a, at least a handful of games. Uh, that one St. Louis game comes to comes to mind when we're talking about sloppy, sloppy games. Uh, much better last time. The only penalty was against Liam O'Brien in the second period for tripping Philip Zadina. So that's a really clean game, and uh, I want to see more of that, especially against you know teams that actually can convert on their power plays. Oh, absolutely. So, so that will be a perfect second key then, as we mentioned. Limit the gosh darn penalties. Limit the gosh darn penalties. What about the third key, Robin? I think the third key has to come down to protecting the goaltender because the defense is playing better right now, which is good, Mm -hmm. but this is, of this stretch, probably the best team that they're going to face throughout the stretch to end the year. So protecting the goaltender is going to be insanely uh, important for this Coyotes team because whether it's Veggie, who's a hot hand right now, or Ingram coming back and hopefully uh, having a better start and getting back on track. Regardless of which goalie it is, if you limit the opportunities, maybe you let him get a couple low percentage saves early to kind of wake him up, get him engaged. I know some goaltenders tend to really like when they get a bunch of shots on them early. Uh, keep him awake, keep him alert, make sure that, that the lanes aren't uh, so clogged they can't see, but obviously clog them up enough to where there's not too much, uh, too much light of day. Pretty mm-hmm. much protect your goaltender. <laughs> No, you're you're uh, you're absolutely right. And I wanted to take a look at the comment you made about you know this being one of the toughest matchups, you know, to end the year. And I'm looking at you know all the previous games the Coyotes played in the last month, um, and or at least this month of, of of December. And in December alone, the only two teams that were actually like, you know, tough teams to play against are the Flyers and the Bruins. Those teams are like good teams this year. Um, and again, because I didn't mention the Stanley Cup gauntlet because that was mostly in November. With a little bit of it going, you know, leeway like the Blues and the Capitals going into December, but you can make what you do, what you will about those two teams at, at, the, at, at how they stand right now. The Avalanche are a tougher team. And then, of course, looking forward, they end, they actually end the year on the 29th against the Ducks, which are. Not a good team. Um, take advantage. Off, though. Yeah. So take advantage. Take advantage as much as you can. It's yeah. Is it a hard team? Sure. But win one of these two games because you're playing essentially a home and home. I know you have a holiday break in between, so like it's a back to back. But you're playing a home and home. Win one of the games against Colorado. They're a top three team in the division. If you can win one of them, it shows you're still going to play uh, competent, competitive hockey against some of the better teams. And not only that, too, yeah, that, and I think it goes to the sense where it proves to more national media and a, and a bunch of other things. Um, I was listening to a Thursday's edition of Locked On NHL, right? Where thir- if if those that don't listen to Locked On NHL, that's the show in which they dedicate. Um, that is the day of which they dedicate to reviewing over what we have our our um, host voted power rankings. We look at the power rankings. They vote based off where the teams are, and they kind of. And in yesterday's episode, they kind of looked at like you know who are actually contenders, who is bubble team, who might fall out. Um, and it was mentioned that it's like, yeah, I kind of think that oh Edmonton. They're like, I think Edmonton will probably find their step, you know, find their step, and Arizona might be like one of those teams that just ends up faltering out at the end. Um, and I think you know, I mean, you've made your statement 
Matthew, that you don't really think this team is is built to make the playoffs quite yet. They're looking like they can, but they're mm-hmm. not going to. Um, but what I want to see is I want to see I want a team that can prove us wrong, right? I want a team that can prove us that they do belong in the playoffs. That they do belong to make to to a, deserve a spot. It is yes, I know we're still in December and we still got three months, like three and a half ish months left of the season. I still want them to prove. I want every single game from this moment forward to be a prove it, whether it's a solid win or even just a really competitive loss. Yeah. Uh, Especially since this team kind of feels really far ahead in the rebuild, but they're still not quite there. I am definitely open to them surprising me and making it to the playoffs. I just still think that like, we saw a lot of the growing pains and we're probably going to still see a lot more of these growing pains throughout the season, especially as games get tougher down the stretch where pretty much I, I still stand by the, the, what I said, heading into the season, they're going to make you think they can make the playoffs. And that's kind of the goal is even if they don't necessarily make it, make you think, and they sure are making me think Robin, they are making me that's, think. I mean, at least that's a good thing at this point. And I want them to continue to be doing that what we're going to do though is we're going to continue talking we're going to get to some predictions i do have a couple other thoughts i want to get to regarding what we just talked about but we do have to uh, take a quick break so we can hear from our sponsors on today's show and today's episode is brought to you by ebay motors passion drive and patience what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive EA Motors is everything you're looking for to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need, the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit available only to U.S. customers. So I have one more thought, Matthew, I want to get to before we get to our actual predictions. Um, it, it, it just goes in sense and kind of coincides with what we just talked about right before the break. And we talked in, in, in the sense that I want this team to continue to prove it against, you know, whether it's a win or a solid win or a competitive loss. And that's even, again, like we talked about this team is getting healthier. They're looking better. Um, they, yes, they're, you know, they're going to miss out on some, some key players long-term Barrett Hayton's going to be out for a little bit for, for a while. Um, I believe I saw like but we saw a report that Travis Boyd's gonna be out probably for the season. Um but it's like if they can at, for me, if they can at, at the very least hold off and looking, you know, whatever it's like, you know, above average, at the very least above above average up until Barrett Hayton comes back, I will be happy. Because then Barrett Hayton can help complete a little bit more. That and this or, is the, I was gonna say that or trade Karel Vamelka for Connor McDavid one for one, so we can <laughs> get that extra center. No, but I, um, you know, I, I, I really think that, and it's, you know, that, that's good. That's a kind of a funny thing, though. But I, I do think, and I want people to realize this: that, um, I've never spoke as highly of Barrett Hayden as I am right now. I like, guess for a while, I'm like, yeah, he's good. I think he deserves to be like a top six, but I never spoke as highly as saying that it's like, just hold on until he returns. So you're finally coming to the dark side. All right. I've been saying this for a while with how good I've never, I mean, and again, I've, I have never been one that has absolutely like, I was like on the complete other side where like, you know, actually trashed him. I was skeptical with him at first. I was like, "Mm." And then I slowly, slowly improved over time. Um, but realizing how much they're missing him, I'm realizing that, okay, he's a huge part of this team. He needs to come back. Um, of course, healthy. Don't bring him back early. No, nah, bring him out there with one leg. It's fine. 
<laughs> just break his kneecap and put him back out there with a knee brace. You'll be fine, kid. <laughs> no, seriously, it's good that that some more people are starting to acknowledge how good Barrett Hayton actually is and, and separate it a little bit from being fifth overall. Separate it a little bit from you know a franchise center, which he isn't. Separate the expectations and what he should have been and look at the solid NHLer we got with him. Uh, I, you know, I'm high on Dylan Strom Hayton mm-hmm. in, a, in a lot of aspects of the game, skating, two way ability, defense, uh, much better than Dylan Strom. I, I just feel like, uh, if, if Hayton had the exact same offensive numbers as Dylan Strom, the fan base would be like really in love with him right now. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and again, what I'm saying is the Kais are doing okay without them. They're surprising. They're, they're surprising a lot of people. They're doing okay without them getting some good wins out of it too. But if they get him back, I feel like this team will start making so many, a lot more strides forward. You want conspiracy theory time? Let's hear it. Conspiracy theory time. Uh, Baron Hayton was holding us back the entire time. Think about it. We didn't have any big win- <laughs> We didn't have any big winning streaks whenever Hayton was playing. Don't Did give you- them any fuel. <laughs> Don't Maybe- give them that kind of fuel. <laughs> Maybe the fans weren't that far off. I'm joking, by the way, but at least two of you listening, your ears perked up for a second. You're like, ah, you see, I found the metric. I found the metric. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. I'm looking to see what his last game played was. It's been a while. It has been a while. <laughs> AZ sports guy gives hate and uh, he, uh, he, he, he had his injury against Dallas on November 14th you beat me to it uh, but I had last, the article no, open no, he last played against Columbus because he had a goal and he got hurt on the, the play he, that he scored a goal in so he was before he got hurt before the Stanley Cup gauntlet so I'm just saying all right maybe maybe Barrett Hayden was holding him back the entire time by being too solid as your first line center. <laughs> Maybe they they needed first line Travis Boyd back to, to start ringing off some wins together. They needed they needed him back just to uh realize that I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Robin's gotta leave the jokey jokes of the professional, the one she brought in. Yeah, <laughs> let's get to let's, let's let's get to the FanDuel odds and close things off. FanDuel odds for tonight's game: Arizona Coyotes are underdogs, point and a half only. Uh, my plus one seventy six in the money line, minus two fifteen for the Colorado Avalanche. Six and a half once again is the total points. Do we think it's going to be something funny like the road team wins both these games? Or do we think the the home team's gonna win both these games? Let's go with the logical choice. Well, hockey is, is stupid. Hockey is stupid. So I'm gonna be logical and see what happens. And that's that's never made me look dumb on this show before. <laughs> um, but let's go with the streak has to come to an end. Uh, Colorado ends it. This team has to think about it over the holiday break, and then they kick Colorado in the teeth seven to one at Mullet Arena. So let's say it's a four to two loss under the six and a half. Um, but the the fourth goal is an empty netter, so the starting goalie only only surrenders three. That's fair. I think that's a very fair prediction. Um, I'm gonna put it. Actually, I will mirror that score. I think that four to two sounds nice. It sounds nice. <laughs> I was trying to think. Is there anything else I can put out there? And I'm like, nah. It just sounds. It might just. It doesn't make sense to me. That sounds like it just makes perfect sense uh, in a game like this. Um, four to two Colorado Avalanche take this one. Um, the Coyotes get mad because they get coal in, in their stockings instead of presents. Or uh, other option is um, uh, we hear a nice little announcement on Christmas Day of the new arena, and then undefeated Coyotes rest of the year Stanley Cup champions. Uh, with with, with that. Would that technically be like a like a sixty win season? Coyotes are just gonna rip them off. No one can beat them again. Stanley Cup champions the next ten years, Robin. As soon as that arena's announced, Stanley Cup champions over and over again. 
they never move into the new arena. They just keep playing a mullet because it's funny and they keep winning cups. Before we close things off, um, that just reminded me um, when someone pointed out the conspiracy theory of of uh, Canada not winning a Stanley Cup ever since the uh, the Coyotes moved to uh, Arizona from Winnipeg. <laughs> That's why they hate us so much. <laughs> It makes perfect sense. They can't win anything, so they got to hate on the Coyotes, who also can't win anything. Ah, cynicism. I love it. <laughs> That's all I got. Uh, Coyotes lose any- four to two. Arena on Christmas. It's 50 some odd game winning streak, yeah. whatever, however, however many games left in the season. And, uh, well. Coyotes rip it off. <laughs> well, that'll be it for today's Saturday edition of the Locked on Coyotes podcast. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review, like, comment, subscribe if you have yet to already. We're available everywhere you get your podcast, including on YouTube, Sirius XM, and ad-free on Amazon Music. Also, uh, for those that want to listen to us on Christmas and um, you know during the Christmas break, we do have a two-part year in review episode coming out on christmas day and day after christmas so be sure to take take a uh, be on the lookout for those episodes uh we'll, we'll get those posted uh first thing so uh, you have some stuff to listen to uh instead of uh, mariah carey every hour um nothing against her i love her but no you know. i got everything fully against mariah carey I'm, I'm so tired of hearing her voice i, I was, she's so talented i hate her <laughs> but uh, you like I said, you'll have stuff to listen to on Christmas and even the day after Christmas. Um, and we'll be back to a regular scheduled program, re- regularly scheduled program shortly afterwards. Um, but uh, also just don't forget to interact with us on social media. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash locked on coyotes and on X at L O underscore coyotes. I'm personally at Robin with a Y underscore L E A N O. Matthew Jacobson is at the AZ sports guy. And I wrap with this as a question you might have. We might answer right back for on a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening. Today's episode, hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on. Oh.